In a recent article written by The Roots' Michael Harriet, Mayor Pete got called out for being a quote-unquote lying motherfucker. Seems like a pretty harsh thing to say, but Harriet was referring to Mayor Pete's 2011 gaffe about education and race in America. The at-the-time mayoral candidate was talking about the value of education and how kids in lower income and minority communities haven't really seen it personally. He's basically addressing the fact that there are no role models that show them education has a valuable result. And this is where Harriet calls him a lying motherfucker. And to understand why, the article goes on to say that Harriet had to jump over a ditch between the black and white side of town. And his friends help him raise funds for college and would drive him to make sure that he could attend classes. So he considers himself very lucky. Michael Harriet did have support. Now, Mayor Pete got to attend Notre Dame and when uh, and then Harvard. Uh, and his dad was a professor at Notre Dame and his mother held a prestigious position at an even more prestigious school. And Mayor Pete and Michael Harriet were lucky in their own respects. In the 2011 mayoral discussion about education, institutional racism and classism weren't even brought up. It's about four to five white men of diverse ages sitting around a table discussing how poor and minority communities deal with challenges of, the, of education without bringing up the costs of going to college or private school or institutional racism that is still alive and well in our education system kind of comes off tone deaf. I moved to the state when I moved to the United States when I was eight years old. Right, I finished the third grade in India, and when I came here, the school I attended wanted me to repeat it because I would be the youngest kid in the class. I guess a foreign kid that's younger than all the American ones doesn't really ring the bells of exceptionalism. But my mom fought for me to stay in the fourth grade. But they decided that since I was coming from India, a developing nation, I would be put into a special reading class to help me, quote, get good at English. Correction, help me speak English well. There wasn't any intellectual reasons for putting me in a special reading class other than the fact that I looked and sounded different from everyone that was in that classroom. And I have to wonder how many times has this happened to other minority kids across the country? Mayor Pete's statement make it sound like there aren't any businessmen going into minority neighborhoods and helping them out. You know, where is the Antonio Banderas type fella when you need one? You know, the, the kind of person that, that uh, used to teach uh, classical dancing at a big theater, but then he fucked up and now has to teach a bunch of rough street talking youths. And in the midst of showing these youths that they are worth something, he himself finds that he is worth something. And, and, and then they win a dance competition to save the school. The thing we don't see that following year is that the school still gets shut down because of a charter school that decided to open up and only one or two of the black kids get to go to that school because they fit the identitarian quota that this charter school was looking for. I mean, his statement is an insult to everyone in these neighborhoods working really hard to keep the lights on and their family fed. It's a very subtle white knight argument. Look, I'm not against allies, but allies don't insist that they're the only ones that can save these communities. These communities are doing what they can to support each other. But ignoring the institutional systems that are put into place to oppress the middle and lower class, especially those in minority communities, well, that's, that's just plain unintelligible. Mayor Pete did call Michael Harriet, the author of the article, to discuss his statements and basically said, look, that statement is from 2011, even before his mayorship be began. So he can't really hold him to it. He's grown as a person and learned a lot more. The problem is Mayor Pete doesn't reflect what he's learned. If he understands that the issue of wealth is connected to the education debate and historically speaking, minority communities are the ones getting screwed over the most, then 
why aren't you for erasing the student debt and reforming the financial end of the education system? What would be the problem with publicly funded colleges? Well, part of the problem might come from the for-profit schools that fund Pete's campaign. Notre Dame and Harvard, as well as NYU, University of California, and Stanford are contributing a good chunk of money to Pete's campaign, plus large investment firms and banking organizations like Blackstone, Charles Schwab, and Wells Fargo, both high tuition universities and companies that lend money to poorer communities have a lot to lose with publicly funded colleges. This one issue is reflective of a much larger problem for Mayor Pete. He doesn't really seem to be connecting with the black community. From demolishing homes in largely black neighborhoods in South Bend that released a bunch of toxins into the air, to firing the first black police chief in South Bend due to pressures from white officers, yeah, Mayor Pete really hasn't made a statement about his blemished records. Mayor Pete is becoming the, sh the, the shining example of why people don't like intellect. They attribute it to out of touch rich people saying fancy things and then do nothing about it. Look, Pete speaks very eloquently. Pete definitely scored very high on the verbal portion of the SATs. He's a Rhodes Scholar, not, not a rogue scholar, although I think I would much rather prefer a rogue scholar, you know, someone that uses their book smarts and philosophication to help people and fight institutionalized oppression. But he's not connecting, connecting with the minority community and the lower income communities because of his past record. Now, Kamala Harris just dropped out of the race, and she claims it's due to lack of funds. But she has like $10 million cash on hand. Tulsi Gabbard is still in the race with way less than that. So I doubt the real reason is money. I think Kamala's record was exposed like a raw nerve after the second debate. Gabbard exposed her horrendous criminal justice record and how she doesn't care about low income and minority communities. She never really made a statement about that, but rather ran a smear campaign against Tulsi. The real reason Kamala Harris's campaign failed is because of Kamala and her record. If Mayor Pete wants to stay afloat in this campaign, he's going to have to address his record as mayor and even before. How can someone that was in a Democratic think tank with Ted Kennedy be a voice for the people? Perhaps that's why he's going to prominent black churches and speaking to the congregation. It could be a form of intelligence gathering so he can have a better way of dealing with his exposed nerves. The issue with Mayor Pete is that there are, there might be uh, too many nerves to contend with. Over his eight year term as mayor of South Bend, he's not just had unfinished projects in low income neighborhoods, but he has pushed to gentrify about 15 blocks of downtown. Diversity in his own cabinet has gone down, and South Bend has 13% minority unemployment rate. Plus, he has missed the mark on helping the homeless in his city. Look, beautifying downtowns are nice and all, but when a city really needs real jobs and protections for their citizens, uh, TGI Fridays or an AMC, it's not really going to cut it. From what it sounds like, South Bend needs deep infrastructural change, and this mayor has been far too out of touch and worried about his own political ambitions. These blind spots make Pete look like an uncaring elite patting himself on the back for words well said. How's that for getting good at English? I don't know what the solution is to fix the problems of education and income through the lens of race. I'm not here to pretend that I can understand the black struggle in American education. But I can learn and listen and hope that you'll do the same with the immigrant struggle of education in America. Allies don't have to solve all the problems. They can just be supportive of each other. Acknowledgement that there is a problem can help all parties involved find a way to move forward together. 
Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video, for tuning into uh, my channel. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell to be notified of more videos. Uh, and if you also like this content, you will probably like my live stand-up comedy. It talks about a lot of similar issues that I talk about in these videos. So if you're a fan of issue-driven, intelligent, socially conscious comedy, I hope that you make it out to one of my live stand-up comedy shows. I'm doing my very last show of 2019 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on December 21st at the Glitterbox Theater. Tickets are available for that show right now. And then in 2020, I will be at the venue on the 35th in Norfolk, Virginia. I will be at the Comedy Closet Comedy Club in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm going to be coming to the station in Carborough, North Carolina. Uh, and then I'm going to be at Caffeine Underground in New York City. And I'll also be opening for my good friend Lee Camp in Philadelphia at the Ruba Club on January 25th. For my entire tour schedule, you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. I hope to see you guys at one of these live shows, and we'll see you on the road.